But the most striking way that I can tell you or I can express how important vitamin C is is to tell you that all animals make this stuff because it's so fundamental. There's only four animals that have lost the ability to make vitamin C. You've got uh, primates, monkeys and, and gorillas. You've got humans, that's us. You've got the fruit bat, presumably because it eats fruit, which contains vitamin C. And then a couple of rodents, guinea pigs, uh, don't make vitamin C. And I think some hamster species don't make vitamin C. So of the 8 million or whatever, probably about 8 million different species on the planet, only four don't make their own vitamin C. And that's all you need to know about how important this stuff is. It's a fundamental biological molecule for all animals. So fundamental they make it. But for some reason, there's four animals that don't, and that includes us. And that's why you've got to make sure that you're supplementing with vitamin C. There's a lot, a lot of uh, misinformation out on the Internet and on radio programs. And by, uh, alternative practitioners, unfortunately, should know, who should know better, talking about vitamin C and uh, the difference between vitamin C and ascorbic acid. Some people are saying vitamin C is not ascorbic acid or ascorbic acid is not vitamin C. So that brings up a question. And it brings up a topic that we've addressed before. I'm going to address it again. Is ascorbic acid vitamin C? And that's a very interesting question. And it really cuts to the heart of what exactly a vitamin is. We use the word vitamin a lot. And we misuse the word vitamin a lot. People throw the word vitamin around glibly and and sometimes ignorantly. They'll say, do you take vitamins? Or I don't take vitamins. Or I don't believe in vitamins. As if the word vitamin is some kind of generic catch-all umbrella phrase that refers to all nutritional supplements. Well, let's be clear here. Let's be literal. A vitamin is defined specifically as a chemical that's, number one, found in foods, And number two, that is a must-have in terms of getting it in your diet or getting it in your food. It's found in foods, and it is essential. That means it's a must-have, like air. Essential is like you have to have it. When we talk about the mighty 90 essential nutrients, we're talking about something that's as, uh, as necessary as air, as necessary as water. Water is an essential nutrient. Air is an essential compound. And vitamins have that same kind of must-have essentiality, that that same kind of must-have essential nature. But it's this first part, the found in food part, that presents a little bit of a difficulty, a little bit of a problem. Is ascorbic acid found in food? Well, yes and no. Ascorbic acid is clearly found in food, but like all food elements, it's linked. It's connected to everything else in the food. So in this way, it's true that ascorbic acid is technically not the same as the entire food vitamin complex. When we take ascorbic acid as vitamin C, obviously, we're not getting the, co- the, the stuff that's attached, the cofactors that are attached to the vitamin C in the foods. And that's why whole foods are always the best way to get your nutrients, theoretically. Theoretically, you always want to make sure you're eating whole foods to get your nutrients. The problem with whole foods is... We really have no way of knowing what's in our whole foods between soil depletion and genetic, uh, genetic modification and pesticides, and processing, even cooking and cutting. We really don't have a clue to how much nutrition is left in our foods. And that includes whole foods and that includes vegetables and that includes fruits and that includes the so-called natural foods that we should all be eating. We just don't know what's in those foods. Numerous studies show that vegetables and produce have fractions of the nutrients they had even a generation ago. Not to mention over the last 50 years or 100 years or 200 years. But that doesn't mean that ascorbic acid does not provide you with vitamin benefits. Yes, whole foods are always going to be better. Yes, whole food vitamin C or whole food ascorbic acid has things attached to it that make it easier for the body to use that vitamin C. But that does not devalue the importance of ascorbic acid. That doesn't mean that ascorbic acid doesn't provide you with vitamin benefits. It does, absolutely. And all you got to do is a little bit of due diligence on scholar.google.com and just look up ascorbic acid. The elements in the food complex known as vitamin C may improve the utilization of the ascorbic acid as far as your digestion, digestive system goes, as far as absorption into the blood goes, as far as absorption into cells perhaps goes. But once, it's, uh, once a cell gets that ascorbic acid, it doesn't have any food with it. Once that cell takes in the ascorbic acid, there's no more food factors left. If you're using a food-based vitamin, if some, some chiropractor on, on the radio told you that you need a food-based vitamin C... You should tell them, or you should know, 
or he should know, that once that cell takes in the ascorbic acid, it doesn't know where that ascorbic acid came from. It could care less where that ascorbic acid came from. All it knows is ascorbic acid. Yes, it's true that all those other things that are in foods that are attached to the vitamin C are good and they're important, but it is the ascorbic acid that is doing the work. It is the ascorbic acid that's doing the heavy lifting. Yes, you need cofactors. Yes, you need bioflavonoids. Yes, it's nice to have a whole food supplement or a whole food uh, vitamin. Yes, that's good. But at the end of the day, from a practical perspective, to fight viruses, to fight cancer, to fight bacteria, to provide immune system support, to prevent oxidation, rusting, to build collagen, to produce prostaglandins, to produce serotonin, and all the other many, many things that vitamin C does in the body, it is the ascorbic acid that is doing the work. Or actually, it's the ascorbate that's doing the work, not the acid part. And anyone who tells you anything different needs to go back to biochemistry 101 and understand how cells work and how the body works. It's just not fair, people. It's not fair for any healthcare practitioner to be spreading misinformation around a subject that is already filled with misinformation, i.e. nutrition, by telling anybody that ascorbic acid is not vitamin C. Or at least that ascorbic acid doesn't have the same, uh, the same effects, the, the vitamin effects of vitamin C. Remember, animals are making their own vitamin C, and when they're under stress, they make more because vitamin C is a stress vitamin. The vitamin C that a, a farm animal, that a cow or a goat will make, can be measured in grams, not milligrams, grams, and more when they're under duress. Clearly, the vitamin C is benefiting the animal, and there's no bioflavonoids. The, when the animal makes its vitamin C, it's not a whole food vitamin C. It's ascorbic acid that it's making, period. And all the other components that are in the food-based vitamin C, they're not being made by the animal. They're in the plants, maybe, but they're not being made by the animal. So when we say an animal makes its own vitamin C, we mean it makes its own ascorbate, not we make or ascorbic acid, not that it makes its own bioflavonoids and food-based vitamin C. You guys, you guys get this. This is so important. That proves to it. That's all you need to know. If an animal makes its own vitamin C, when we say an animal makes its own vitamin C, we mean an animal makes its own ascorbic acid, not food-based vitamin C. Not that food-based vitamin C is not better. Of course it is. Whole foods are always the way to go. Just that we don't know what's in our whole foods. Supplement program, a good nutritional supplement program, is a good insurance policy. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this.